We are back, brothers and sisters. This is part two. Make sure you hit the record button because Instagram is not letting me post my videos. Make sure you record this live because Instagram is not letting me post my videos. Make sure you record this live because Instagram is not allowing Dr. Umar to post my videos. Twitter is not allowing Dr. Umar to post my videos. Facebook is not allowing Dr. Umar to post my videos. Now we're gonna talk about, it looks like we are confirmed. It looks like we are confirmed for Newark, New Jersey, Sunday, November the 15th. Black New Jersey, please write it down. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be at the Source of Knowledge bookstore Sunday, November 15th. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be in Newark, New Jersey. New Jersey stand up. Elizabeth, Patterson, Camden, Trenton, Jersey City. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be coming back to Newark, New Jersey at the Source of Knowledge Bookstore Sunday, November the 15th, New Moon in Scorpio from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Come through, get your food. Queen Mother Masani, Queen Mother Patrice will have that vegan African soul food. Come through. All my Jersey queens, come through. All my Jersey kings, come through. Source of Knowledge, Newark, New Jersey, Sunday, November the 15th, is going to be crazy. The most requested black scholar in the world will be in the building. The number one Pan-Africanist in the world will be in the building. The number one school psychologist in black America will be in the building. The number one black orator of the 21st century will be in the building. The number one black scholar on the planet will be in the building. Let's talk the Donald Trump platinum plan. They got the helicopter over top of me now. They got the helicopter over top of me now. They got the helicopter over top of me now. Let's talk about Trump. Let's talk about Trump. Let's talk about Trump. Okay. According to Donald Trump, he has four pillars of the platinum plan. Let's talk about this platinum plan. If you need to text me personally, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. I'm good because black people invented the helicopter. I'm good because we invented the helicopter. I'm good because we invented the helicopter, but we don't sell none. We invented the cell phone, but we don't produce none. So let's talk about the four pillars of the Donald Trump platinum plan. Number one, Donald Trump says opportunity. By achieving historic employment levels for black Americans, as well as increasing access to capital for new business, President Trump has been committed to ensuring that all black Americans can achieve the American dream. Did y'all hear that? Donald Trump says he has achieved historic employment levels for black America. I want to know what city is he talking about? Because black incarceration has not went down. When Donald Trump lies and says he has achieved historic employment for black people, what black community is he talking about? He damn sure ain't talking about Philadelphia. Philadelphia jails are overcrowded with black men and women who broke the law in order to feed their family. I know he ain't talking about New York. New York City jails are overcrowded with black men and black women who have had to break the law to feed their family. Washington, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Houston, Detroit, Milwaukee. What black community is Donald Trump lying about? What black community is Donald Trump lying about when he says he has achieved historic employment for black Americans? Where at? First of all, we've been under COVID for the whole damn year. What historic employment has Donald Trump got? See, he's lying. He's lying. This is a damn lie, brothers and sisters. This is a damn lie, brothers and sisters. This is a damn lie, brothers and sisters. What employment is he talking about? Number two, security. By signing into law the celebrated First Step Act, 
Donald Trump has brought common sense criminal justice reform to the American people for the first time in decades while ensuring that our streets and communities are safe for families. You ain't done nothing. That First Step Act hardly does anything. It only deals with soft crimes. It only deals with soft crimes. It's not really helping the brothers and sisters who are behind bars for long-term drug offenses. It ain't doing nothing for those who have long-term drug offenses. You ain't doing nothing about all those young millennials who are going to be in jail for the next 10, 20, 30 years on nonviolent drug offenses. That First Step Act is a bullshit act. That First Step Act is a bullshit act. And then you say, ensuring that the streets are safe. How is Donald Trump ensuring that the streets are safe when you wouldn't even speak out against police genocide? Donald Trump has never said a word against police genocide. Why would I be voting for him? Why would I? Donald Trump talking about he made the black community safe. How has Donald Trump made the black community safe? He's a damn liar. He's a damn liar. You letting the police kill our brothers and sisters? You letting the police kill our brothers and sisters? You refuse to hold the police accountable? You won't even speak up against black genocide. You won't even speak up against police assassination. And you talking about you made the community safer. Who you think you playing with? Let's go to pillar number three. I'm reading straight from it. I'm reading straight from the platinum plan prosperity as the first president to provide long-term funding of hbcus this administration continues to seek immediate and generational advancement for black americans really let me check something let me check something real fast donald trump hbcu funding because i know this is some more nonsense donald trump hbcu Donald Trump signed a bill that will permanently provide $250 million a year to the HBCUs along with dozens of other institutions that serve large shares of minority students. I'm going to read that again and I want to see if y'all can detect the deception in what I just said. Did y'all hear it? Did y'all hear? It's the double talk. It's the traditional double talk of the European. It's the traditional double talk of the European. I'm going to read it again, and I want you to see if you can pick up the double talk. Here we go. Donald Trump signed a bill that will permanently provide more than $250 million a year to the nation's historically black colleges. Right? That sounds good, don't it? That sounds good, don't it? Now listen to the other part. Listen to the other part. Along with dozens of other institutions that serve large shares of what? Minority students. Along with dozens of other institutions that serve large shares of what? Minority students. In other words, brothers and sisters, this bill reads like the 13th Amendment. This bill reads like the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment says slavery shall not be legal in these territories except slavery shall not be legal in these territories except as a punishment for a crime. See that? You promise this in the first part of the pledge and you take it all back in the second part of the pledge. Donald Trump says $250 million for HBCUs in the first part of the pledge. In the second part of the pledge, he says, along with dozens of other institutions that serve large shares of minority students. In other words, in other words, that $250 million can go to white schools. That $250 million can go to white schools that serve blacks and other non-black minorities. You can fool 
most of the people all the time. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You can't fool Dr. Umar none of the time. You can fool most of the people most of the time. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You can't fool Dr. Umar none of the time. He's going to give that money to white universities. He's going to give that money to white universities that serve Hispanics. Homosexuals. Women. And other non-white people. That's why you got to do your research. That's why you got to do your research. He's not helping HBCUs. He's looking like he's helping HBCUs, but by using the word other institutions and minority, by using the words other institutions and minority, by using the words other institutions and minority, he's able to take that money and give it to whoever he wants. It's just like the 1964 Civil Rights Bill when they added the word gender and sexual orientation. The 1964 Civil Rights Bill looked like it was for black people. The 1964 Civil Rights Bill looks like it was for black people. But then they added the word gender and sexual orientation. They added the word gender and sexual orientation into the 1964 Civil Rights Bill and took it all and gave it to women and homosexuals. I'm just stating the fact. Now let's get back to the platinum plan. Let's get back to the platinum plan. Fairness as demonstrated through his actions to initiate investment into opportunity zone as well as address health disparity wage gaps and necessary education opportunity zones ain't nothing but gentrification zones donald trump you're not fooling me an opportunity zone ain't nothing but a gentrification zone donald trump you're not fooling me an opportunity zone is nothing but a way for donald trump to give rich white men a lot of money an opportunity zone is nothing but a way for Donald Trump to give rich white men a lot of money and then those rich white money will give a couple black contractors some crumbs. He's calling that black empowerment. He's calling that black empowerment. The opportunity zone ain't nothing but a gentrification zone. The opportunity zone ain't rebuilding the black ghetto. The opportunity zone is turning the black ghetto into a white suburb. The opportunity zones is turning the black ghetto into a white suburb. The opportunity zone ain't nothing but a Negro removal program. It's a gentrification zone. Opportunity zone ain't nothing but gentrification. And then he says he's addressing health disparity. How has he addressed health disparities, Donald Trump? Somebody tell me. What has Donald Trump done to address health disparities for black people? Somebody tell me. Did I miss something? And then he says wage gap. Donald Trump has done nothing to address a wage gap. He's done nothing to address a wage gap. And he says education reform. I'm top five most influential black educators in the world. I'm top five most influential black educators in the world. Easy. Easy. What educational reform has Donald Trump brought to black America? Has he reformed special ed? Has Donald Trump reformed special ed? Has he reformed suspensions and expulsions of black boys? Has he reformed ADHD? entrapment has he reformed the pushing of drugs on black boys has he reformed white teacher racism has he reformed educational funding what has donald trump done to improve the schools he has done nothing he has done nothing i don't want to be president of america but i love to be president of black america let's keep going and then over the next four years, let's talk about what he's. Pro so those are the four things he claims he's done. We've just proven he's done none of it. Those are the four things Donald Trump has claimed to have done the past four years. We know he's done none of it. Now let's talk about what he's going to do the next four. Y'all ready? 
Let's talk about what Donald Trump says. If black people vote for me, I'm going to do these 12 things over the next four years. Number one, he says he's going to create 3 million new jobs in the black community. 3 million new jobs in the black community. Let's see now. 3 million new jobs, right? Let's do some simple math. Let's do some simple math. 3 million divided by, excuse me, 50 million blacks in America divided by 3 million jobs equals one out of every 17 black people will get a job. Does that sound like a solution even if he does it? There's 50 million American Africans. Donald Trump is promising 3 million new jobs over the next four years if you vote for him. There's 50 million of us, but he's going to create 3 million new jobs if you vote for him. And if you divide 3 million new jobs into 50 million black people, one out of every 17 black people will get a job. One out of every 17. One to 17. That's not half the blacks. That's not a quarter of the blacks. That's not even 5% of the blacks. And then on top of that, he doesn't even tell you what kind of jobs. McDonald's, Burger King, what kind of jobs is he going to create? He don't say anything about business grants. He don't say anything about business loans, but jobs. He's going to create a way for you to get your labor exploited by some white man who owns the business. He's going to create a way for you to get your labor exploited by some white man who owns the business. He's a damn joke. And you a joke too, if you support that. He's a damn joke. And you a joke too. If you support that. <clears throat> I'm not Trump or Biden. I believe in rejecting the system. I reject the whole system. See, I'm not one. There you go again with that narrative. So who do we vote for, Dr. Umar? Donald Trump, Joe Biden. Go ask that to the Kuhn Illuminati. Go ask the Coons that question. Don't ask Dr. Umar that question because I have rejected the whole system of European white supremacist democracy. No matter who wins tonight, white supremacy wins tonight and black people lose. No matter who wins tonight, white supremacy wins tonight and black America loses. No matter who wins tonight, white supremacy wins, black America loses. So don't ask me which one should you vote for. I'm not in that dichotomy. I'm for African liberation. So I can't answer that question. I'm for African liberation and neither one of them are dealing with it. I've told you over and over again, there are five major problems that affect black people. Donald Trump not dealing with none of them. Joe Biden not dealing with none of them. There's five major problems that affect black America. Donald Trump isn't dealing with any of them. Joe Biden isn't dealing with any of them. Mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, access to wealth, police genocide, mass incarceration, gentrification, miseducation, access to wealth, police genocide, mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, access to wealth, police genocide. Neither candidate has a real program. You notice Donald Trump doesn't give you any percentages. Donald Trump doesn't give you any ratios. He doesn't show you a plan of how he's going to achieve this because it's only a promise. He knows when he wins, he's not going to do none of it because he don't have to be accountable no more. He's in his second term. You hold presidents accountable the first term, not the second. You hold presidents accountable the first term, not the second. You hold presidents accountable the first term, not the second. He's not going to do nothing for us. And Joe Biden's not going to do nothing for us. Let's keep going. 500,000 new black-owned businesses. 
Donald Trump says if black people vote for him, he's going to create 500,000 black owned businesses. Let's do the math. Let's do the math. There's 50 million of us divided by 500,000 black businesses that Donald Trump is going to create. One out of every 100 black people will be given one out of every 100 black people will be given a business. Is that a solution? There's 1% of black America. 1%, 1% of black America will be helped to open a business by Donald Trump if y'all re-elect him. 1% of black America will be given a business and he don't even tell you what kind. Water ice stand, hot pretzel stand, licorice stand. What kind of business is we talking about here, Donald? What kind of businesses are we talking about here, Donald? And then he says he's going to commit to working on a second step act. A second, in other words, I didn't do enough to help the blacks in prison, so I'm going to act like I'm going to do more my last year when I don't have to be accountable to them. I did nothing for black folks my first four years, but if they reelect me, I'm going to do something for them my last four years. Who believes that? Who believes that? Who believes that? Access to better education and job training. What kind of jobs, Don? Job training? Are you going to bring back the carpentry program in the black inner city high schools? Are you going to bring back the electricity program in the black inner city high schools? Are you going to bring back the HVAC program in the black inner city high schools? Are you going to bring back the masonry program, the welding program, the computer building and networking program, the inner city black high schools Donald Trump or are you going to bring black back the trades no you're not you're not going to bring back the trades Donald Trump you know why because you were endorsed by many of the trade unions just like Biden you guys were endorsed y'all split the trade unions y'all split the trade unions and the trade unions don't want young black men and women being trained in high school because it it eliminates their monopoly on who gets hired to get the contracts. The trade unions don't want the electrical program back in the hood. They don't want the plumbing program back in the hood. They don't want the HVAC program back in the hood. They don't want the roofing program or the welding program back in the hood. They don't mind the barber shops and the beauty shops. They don't care about the barber shops and the beauty shops, but they don't want nothing else back in the black high school because if you train black men they're going to have to give black men jobs and they don't want to do that the best way to not give black men a job on these contracts is to make sure they don't have the licenses the best way to give black men's job to keep black men from getting jobs on these contracts to build these projects is to make sure they don't have the training Donald Trump, you are a liar. And Joe Biden, you're not much different. Donald Trump, you are dishonest. And Joe Biden isn't much different. Let's keep on going. Give black churches, listen to this. He gonna take a page out of former President George W. Bush's book. Donald Trump is gonna take a page out of former President George W. Bush's book. Donald Trump is gonna take a page out of former President George W. Bush's book. He says he's gonna give black churches the ability to compete for federal funding for their community. He's gonna give black churches the right to compete for federal money. That's what George W. Bush did when he beat Al Gore Y2K election. They turned the black church into the FBI. They turned the black church into the FBI. They turned the black church into the FBI faith-based initiative. Donald Trump is going to empower the faith-based initiative. If you want to know why the black church doesn't do anything for black people, if you want to know why the black church doesn't do anything for black people, if you want to know why the black church doesn't do anything for black people, look no further than the faith based initiative 
look no further than the faith-based initiative. The faith-based initiative allows the black church to compete for black money. And the only reason why he put that in there is so these thirsty ass pastors and imams the only reason why he put that in there is so these thirsty ass black pants pastors and imams. The only reason why he put that in there is so these thirsty ass black pastors and imams will force their congregation to vote for Donald Trump, hoping they're going to get some of that shut up money. The only reason why he put that in there is so the black pastor and the black imam will go into the masjid on Friday and the church on Sunday to force black people to vote for Donald Trump so they can get some of that shut up grant money. Grant money is shut up money. That's why we don't take none at FDMG. Grant money is shut up money. And that's why we don't take none at FDMG. Grant money is shut up money. And that's why we don't take none at FDMG. So Donald Trump is telling the black church, if you help me win, I will give you some grant money to keep you out of the mass incarceration struggle and keep you out the miseducation struggle and keep you out the gentrification struggle and keep you out the police genocide struggle and keep you out the access to wealth struggle. And then he says he's going to bring better health care to the black community, but he has no plan. And then he says, listen to this. He even threw ADOS and FBA a little bone. He even threw ADOS and FBA a little bone. He even threw the agents, distractors, opportunists, and saboteurs in the fraudulent black American groups a little bone. He said... He's going to create an immigration policy that protects American jobs. He's going to create an immigration policy that protects American jobs. So with that, he's telling black America that we're going to keep black Africans out the country so you can have jobs. He's telling black America subliminally, subliminally, subliminally he's telling black america that if you vote for me i'm going to keep africans out continental africans out of america so y'all can have a job but donald trump my african immigrant brothers are not a problem for me donald trump my african immigrant money african immigrant brothers and sisters ain't doing nothing to hurt me you ain't said nothing about keeping the mexicans out though did you you ain't say nothing about keeping the Mexicans out, though, did you? You ain't say nothing about keeping Mexicans and European immigrants out the country. You only talking about black folks. You only talking about black folks. You only talk about black folks. You ain't say nothing about the Mexicans. You ain't say nothing about the Chinese. You ain't say nothing about the European immigrants. Get out of here with that shit. Take that to the Adolf's people. I'm a Pan-Africanist. All for one, one for all, united we stand, divided we fall. Take that to them with that bullshit. I'm not into the African-American tribalism. I'm a Pan-Africanist. Take that shit over there to them. Next, he says, he's going to advance home ownership and enhance financial literacy in the black community. He's going to enhance home ownership and financial literacy. We don't need no damn home ownership. We need protection from the police and economic empowerment. We don't need no damn home ownership. Home ownership is not a top 10 black America problem. Middle class Negroes, middle class Negroes, do you realize that black America is struggling to pay their rent? Do you realize black America is struggling to pay their rent? And you talk about some damn home ownership, home, home, home ownership? And y'all using the damn home loan, the home ownership loans, just like y'all use the student loans. Y'all using the home loans the same way y'all using the student loans. What did I tell y'all before? What did I tell y'all before? What did I tell y'all before? I said, they'll give you a student loan. They'll give you a car loan. They'll give you a home loan. They'll give you a student loan. They'll give you a car loan. They'll give you a home loan. They'll give you a student loan. They'll give you a car loan. They'll give you a home loan.
but they're not going to give you a business loan because the home loan going to keep you in debt. The student loan going to keep you in debt. The car loan going to keep you in debt. The home loan going to keep you in debt. The student loan going to keep you in debt. The car loan going to keep you in debt. Business loan will liberate you, so they're not going to give you that. Business loan will liberate you, so they're not going to give you that. Business loan will liberate you, so they're not going to give you that. And then the last thing he says, onshore manufacturing jobs and develop opportunities for black-owned businesses. So he's saying they're going to bring back the jobs that they start taking out the inner cities back in the 60s before they drop the crack epidemic on us. Donald Trump is going to bring back the factories in the black inner cities that they closed down in the 1960s and 70s before they dropped off welfare and crack. Donald Trump is going to bring back the manufacturing jobs, the factories in the inner cities that they shut down in the 60s and 70s before they dropped off welfare and crack. That's what he's saying. He's going to bring back the manufacturing jobs. Here's the problem. If they've already gentrified the black community, who you think going to get them jobs in the factories when the factories open back up in the inner city? If they didn't already remove black folks out if they didn't already remove black folks out the inner city, when they open up the factory jobs, who do you think going to get the factory jobs if they didn't already gentrify the community? White folks going to get them jobs. White folks are going to get them jobs, brothers and sisters. We not going to get them jobs. We not going to get them jobs. White folks are going to get them jobs. Who does Donald Trump think he playing with? Who does Donald Trump think? He don't say nothing about police genocide. He don't say nothing about gentrification. He don't say anything specific about incarceration. He don't say nothing specific about fixing the schools. And his access to wealth is pure nonsense. His access to wealth is pure nonsense. I'm done talking about him. I'm going to be wrapping up in 10 to 15 minutes. I want to talk about black money. I don't want you wasting your money this Christmas. I want you to save it. We need to boycott Christmas this year and save that money to organize ourselves politically and economically with the National Black Independent Party. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Please boycott Christmas. Boycott Black Friday. Keep your money in your pockets. Keep your money in your pockets. Keep your money in your pockets on Black Friday, brothers and sisters. Keep your money in your pockets. Boycott Black Friday. Boycott the holiday Christmas shopping season. Boycott it, brothers and sisters. We're organizing. Dr. Umar is coming out with the National Independent Black Party. National Independence Party. The National Black Independence Party. NBIP, National Black Independence Party. We coming out with the National Black Independence Party, NBIP, in the new year. We're going to need your money. We got to raise money for the politicians. We need money. When we choose who's going to be the next mayor, when we choose who's going to be the next state rep, state senator, council person, we got to put money behind them. We have to put money behind them. We have to put money behind them. Save your money. Don't liquidate your money. Save your money. There could be no political power without economic power. There could be no political power without economic power. There could be no political power without economic power. There could be no political power without economic power. Please, brothers and sisters, boycott Black, Black Friday. Listen to these economic statistics. Listen to these economic statistics. Listen to these economic statistics. The 100 richest people in America have more wealth than all of black America put together and their celebrities. I'm going to repeat it. America's 100 richest people in this country 
the 100 richest people in the United States of America have more wealth than black America and its celebrities. Did y'all hear what I just said? Did y'all hear what I just said? 100 white people in this country have more wealth than all 50 million Africans, including our celebrities. That is a fact that I have researched. I'm gonna say it again, and y'all think voting matters. And y'all think a disorganized black vote matters. And y'all think a disorganized black vote matters. The 100 richest Americans have more wealth than all of black America, including all black celebrities. Combined, combined, we have to boycott Christmas this year. We have to boycott Black Friday this year. Let me go to another statistic. 63% of black Americans prefer to shop for Christmas at the most expensive stores. 63% of black Americans prefer to shop for Christmas at the most expensive stores. 63% of black Americans prefer to shop at Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus in Bloomingdale's. Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus in Bloomingdale's. I have a question. What is Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus in Bloomingdale's doing for black people? What is Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus and Bloomingdale's doing for black people? I've never shopped in none of them, so you got to help me out. I've never shopped in none of them. Can somebody please post up? Educate Dr. Umar. Educate Dr. Umar. What are we buying in Saks? What are we buying in Neiman Marcus? And what are we buying in Bloomingdale's that makes them the preferred shopping stores for black people? 63% of black people like to shop at Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, and Bloomingdale's. What are they doing for us that makes those three stores so popular for black people? Compared to other Americans, other Americans only shop there 25% of the time. White people and Hispanics and Chinese, they shop at Saks, Neiman, and Bloomingdale's 25% of the time. Black people shop at Saks, Neiman Marcus, and Bloomingdale's 63% of the time. What are we buying there? I've never shopped at those stores. What do we buy at Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, and Bloomingdale's that makes it so important to 63% of black folks help me understand help me understand 52 percent of black people find shopping relaxing which is a big problem i told you before shopping is a drug for black people that we use to intoxicate us from the realities of white supremacy. 52% of black people find shopping relaxing. Only 25% of other Americans find shopping relaxing. 52% of black people find shopping relaxing, but only 25% of other Americans find shopping relaxing. Stop using shopping as a drug. Spending your money is not treatment or therapy. Spending your money is not psychotherapy. Spending your money is not psychotherapy. Stop shopping to feel better. Stop shopping to feel better. You want to feel better? Exercise, meditate, chant, read, study, pray, go walking, spend time with family. Shopping is not psychotherapy. We cannot afford to use our money as an intoxicant. Black America cannot afford to use our money as an intoxicant. 
90% of all beauty products bought in America are bought by black people. Did y'all hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Do your own research to verify these statistics. I did mine, you do yours. 90% of all beauty products sold in America are sold to black people. 90% of all beauty products sold in America are sold to black people. Don't you find that ridiculous? Don't you find that ridiculous? Don't you find that ridiculous, brothers and sisters? Don't you find that 90% of all beauty products sold in America are sold to Negroes? And y'all think voting matters when you ain't got no organized economics. And y'all think voting matters when you don't have any organized economics. And y'all crying about $250,000 so we can fix the HVAC system at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy so we can educate black boys. And y'all think... And y'all crying about helping me finish up a school. And y'all crying about helping me finish up a school. And you at Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, and Bloomingdale's. Y'all ready for the next statistic? Black people spend $574 million on soap and bathing products alone. Black people spend $574 million on soap and bathing products alone. Black people spend $574 million on soap and bathing products alone. Can you please help me understand why we spending so much money on soap and bubble bath and whatever else y'all using to wash your asses? Why does it cost $574 million to wash the black ass. Why does it cost $574 million to wash the black ass? Help me understand. Where did I get these numbers? Go find it. I'm not giving you nothing. Go find it. I'm not accountable to you. Go find it. I don't owe no damn YouTube and Instagram coons no answers. I'm not accountable to you, brother. Go find your own statistics, you damn coon. Probably got a white girl. Why are we, why does it cost $574 million to wash the black ass? Why does it cost $574 million a year just to wash your ass? Why? What kind of bubble bath? What kind of soap? What kind of liquid soap? What kind of sponge? What kind of rag? What kind of shampoo are we using? I assume a lot of this is for the perm and weave sisters. I assume a lot of this is for the perm and weave because I know y'all got to use certain shampoo to wash out that perm smell and perm juice. So I think a lot of this is for the shampoos and conditioners. I think a lot of this is for the shampoos and conditioners. I think a lot of this is for the shampoos and conditions. Listen to this. We spend $574 million on soap and bath, $2 billion on, on Air Jordans, $11 million on grits, $4 billion on liquor and alcohol, $1 billion on fast food. We buy half the Mercedes Benzes of white folks. And yet, 96% of the top 1 million households are white. 96% of the top 1 million households in America are white. You got $2 billion for Air Jordans, but 96% of the top 1 million households in America are white. You got a Billion dollars for McDonald's every year, but 96% of the top million households in America are white. You shopping at Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, and Bloomingdale's, but 96% of the top 1 million households in America are white, 
and the black ones are probably all celebrities. And the black ones are probably all celebrities. And the black ones are probably all celebrities. And you think the black vote matters. The black vote will never matter until the black dollar is tied to it. The black vote will never matter until the black dollar is tied to it. The black vote will never matter until the black dollar is tied to it. Listen to this. The five largest white land owners own more land than all of black America put together. The five largest white land owners own more land than all of black America put together. Let me say it again. The five largest white land owners in the United States own more land than all of black America put together. And you Negroes is worried about Black Friday and Christmas. And you Negroes is worried about Black Friday and Christmas. And you Negroes are worried about Black Friday and Christmas when you got five white folk who own more land than all of black America put together. You got five white folk who own more land than all of black America put together. You Negroes should be ashamed of yourself. You, my last statistic for the day, then I'm going to wrap it up. I hope y'all found this beneficial. It's the most important scholar on the most important day for some black people, this is not the most important day for me. What is the most important day of the year for black America, for black, for Dr. Umar? What is the most important day in black America for Dr. Umar? The most important day in black America for Dr. Umar is the day we get organized economically and politically. The most important day of the year for black America, according to Dr. Umar, is the day we get organized economically and politically. That's the most important day for black America, according to Dr. Umar. Here's my last statistic. 200, listen to this statistic. According to The Economist, it would take 228 years for the average black family wealth to accumulate and equal the average white family wealth. I'm going to say that again. I hope you heard what I just said. According to the researchers, it would take 228 years. That's a quarter of a millennium. Almost two and a half centuries. According to the research, it will take 228 years for the average wealth of the black family to equal the average wealth of the white family and you weren't about the voting. It will take 228 years for the average wealth of the black family to equal the average wealth of the white family and y'all weren't about Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It will take two and a half centuries for the average wealth of the average black family to equal the average wealth of the average white family. 228 years and the only solution that the Kuhn Luminati, Negro aristocracy, black bourgeoisie gatekeepers, the only solution that they have for you is to go vote for a white man. That's their solution to that. Their solution to that is to go vote for a white man. That's their solution. We start with the National Black Independent Party Convention next year. We start with the National Black Independent Party Convention next year. Who wants to host? Who believe that they have the energy and the commitment and the confidentiality? What city should we host the first annual National Black Independence Party Convention? Where should we host it at? Where should we host the National Black Independence Party Convention? Where should we host it? Where should we host the very first National Black Independence Party Convention? Where should we host the convention? Hey, 
brothers and sisters, I want to close out by saying this. I'll be damned if we go into next year. Year number 402. I'll be damned if we go into next year. Year number 402, the same way we went into the previous 401 years. The National Black Independent Party is coming. I'm going to need some people I can trust. I'm going to need some brothers and sisters who ain't jealous, who are not easily provoked to jealousy, who are not gossipers, who are not slanderers. I need serious black women who don't have to compete with other black women to feel secure about themselves. I need serious black men who are not insecure by Dr. Umar being out front leading the charge. I need some elders who are not control freaks. I need some elders who are not control freaks, who don't think they have a right to dictate how we do things. I need some serious black people to help me organize the National Black Independence Party convention next year. We not playing. This is not a talk fest. You join the party, there will be membership dues that you will have to pay. You're going to represent the party. You're going to run for office. You're going to follow the party platform or you will get the ski mask club. You want to run for office and use our platform? You want to run for office as an official candidate of the National Black Independence Party? You want to follow our platform or the ski mask club will come see you. There will be a ski mask club. There will be a ski mask club. Don't think for one minute you're going to use us, get in office and betray us. I promise you. You think the Italian mafia was something? Wait till you see the ski mask club. Don't play games with us. We coming and we coming strong. For Sisters Only podcast, for any of the sisters out there who want to join the Dr. Umar for Sisters Only podcast, is $9.99 a month. First episode is dropping this week. First episode is dropping this week. $9.99 a month. Auto pay. You could text me. For the link to sign up for the For Sisters Only podcast. Exclusively for black women. First episode, sex is not a cure for depression and loneliness, black women. First episode, sex is not a cure for depression or loneliness, black women. First episode, sex is not a cure for depression and loneliness, black women. Dr. Papa podcast, $9.90 month. Next, $9.99 a month. Next episode is number 10. Is your coon chip activated? Next episode is number 20. Is your coon chip activated? Dr. Papa podcast. Next episode coming out this week. Please forgive the delay for my podcast family. Episode number 20 is coming out. Is your coon chip activated? If you need the link, you can text me. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858 215-989-9858 Nat Turner Land, November the 11th, sign up NatTurnerLibrary.com Order your e Tune Day apparel Order your e Tune, your hats, your hoodies, your face masks DrUmarJohnson.com 10% off until November the 11th Password is Uprise 10% off all Dr. Umar merchandise, e Tune Day apparel at drumarjohnson.com. Password is Uprise. Join the Loyal Donors Club. Help us raise the money to finish fixing up the school brothers and sisters. Help us raise the money to finish fixing up the school brothers and sisters. Help us raise the money to finish fixing up the school brothers and sisters. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Go to drumarjohnson.com and sign up for the Loyal Donors Club. Go to drumarjohnson.com and sign up for the Loyal Donors Club. $50 a month bronze, $100 a month silver, $250 a month gold, $5,000 a month platinum, $1,000 a month diamond. Dr. Umar Black College and Consciousness Tour is coming up. 
next spring and summer. Dr. Umar Black College and Consciousness Tour is coming up next summer, 11 to 17 year old young brothers and sisters. Dr. Umar Black College and Consciousness Tour is coming up, 11 to 17 young brothers and sisters. Dr. Umar Black College and Consciousness Tour is coming up, 11 to 17 young brothers and sisters. It's coming up. We working on an Africa trip for next summer. We working on an Africa trip for next summer. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, December the 10th. Atlanta, Georgia, November the 19th. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, December the 10th. Black Parent Advocate book release. Atlanta, Georgia, November the 19th. Black Parent Advocate book release. Newark, New Jersey, Sunday, November the 15th. Newark, New Jersey, Sunday, November the 15th. Newark, New Jersey, Sunday, November the 15th. Source of Knowledge Bookstore in Newark. Black Parent Advocate book release. Nat Turner Land, November the 11th. 189 years of celebrating the greatest black revolutionary in American history. If you want to donate to Dr. Umar's other works, separate from FDMG, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. If you want to donate to Dr. Umar's other works, separate from FDMG, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. But donate to the school first. I do not come first. The school comes first. I do not come first. The school comes first. Dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG school. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Those of you who have ordered your book online, I'm taking more books to the post office tomorrow morning. Those of you who have ordered the book online, Dr. Umar is taking more books to the post office tomorrow morning. I thank you for being patient. Thank you, New York. I enjoyed you. Thank you, Detroit. I enjoyed you. Thank you, Chicago. 10 years. This is the 10-year anniversary victory lap. King Kong Consciousness, Notorious RBG, International Ifatunde. We shall be victorious.